Maayong buntag sa tanan. My name is Nesilin Ialiera, second year Bachelor of Physical Education and today I'm going to show you the culture of the Visayan tribe during the pre-colonial times and this is under the classification of the countryside. So without further ado, let's go! Visayans or the Visayan people are a Philippine ethno-linguistic group native to the whole Visayas, the southernmost islands of Luzon, and many parts of Mindanao. They are the largest ethnic group in the geographical division of the Philippines when taken as a single group numbering 33.5 million. Pumapangalawa ang tribo ng Visayas sa pinakamalaking ethnic group na tumitira doon, nunguna ang tribo Tagalog. The Visayas broadly share a maritime culture with a strong Roman Catholic traditions merged with cultural elements through centuries of interaction and intermigrations mainly across the seas of Visayas, Cebuyan, Camotes, Bohol, and Sulu in some secluded areas merged with ancient animistic, polytheistic influences and that is folk Catholicism. Cebuano also referred to by most of its speakers as Bisaya or Binisaya. The Visayan society have two pre-colonial classes which are the Tumawo and the Timawa. Tumawo or the noble class were the nobility social class among the various cultures of the pre-colonial Philippines. Among the Visayans, the Tumawo were further distinguished from the intermediate royal families or the Kadatuan. Next, we have the Timawa or the warrior class. The Timawa were the feudal warrior class of the ancient Visayan societies of the Philippines. Ibig sabihin, ang Tumawo or the noble class, sila yung nagahari at reyna ng grupo. While ang Timawa or the warrior class, sila yung mga mandirigma ng grupo na kung saan pinaglalaban ang kanilang tribo. Next, we have the Barangay Government of the Visayan Tribe during the pre-colonial. We have three, the ruling class, the middle class in the serfs or commoners, and slaves or the alipin. So for the ruling class or the Maginotumawo, we have Apo, Datu, Panglima, Raha, Sultan, at Timuay. And as for the middle class, we have the Timawa and the Maharlika. Next, as for the Alipin, we have the Alipin Mamamahay, Alipin Sagigilid, Bulisik, Bulislis, or Huruhan, or Lipon. Economy of the Visayan Tribe. So this is a latest economy of the Visayan Tribe. So Visayas is the archipelago's smallest group, yet it has plenty to boast about. A progressive economy, natural wonders, and resources, rich in culture interesting, cultural festive, and friendly and hospitable loving people. There are three administrative regions, which are the Vis Western Visayas, Eastern Visayas, and the Central Visayas. So the Western Visayas economy, they have sugar, coconut, fruits, root crops, and vegetables as, major, as their major products, and also mineral resources such as copper, gold, silver, and non-metallic products such as coal and limestone. And as for the Eastern Visayas, they have rice, corn, coconut, sugarcane, and banana. And also, they do mining, sugar milling. As for the Eastern Visayas, they have rice, corn, coconut, sugarcane, and banana. And also, they do mining, sugar milling, coconut oil extraction, alcohol distilling, beverage manufacture, and marine products. And as for the Central Visayas, they have tourist spots, beautiful landscapes, and also mariner. And as for the Visayan tribe, during the pre-colonial times, they do um, vegetables as their major products. And as for the Visayan tribe, during the pre-colonial times, they do um, root crops. They have root crops, vegetables as their major products. And also, they do fishing. This time, we are going to witness the life of the Visayan tribe during the pre-colonial times. And this information is coming from Mr. Miguel Lopez. And later, we, I am going to introduce to you who is Mr. Lo Miguel Lopez. So, the Visayas before Spanish colonization. The Visayans of 1521 and consequently the ones of Legazpi's time 40 years later were more than generic Western stereotypes. They were real people with a rich culture and diverse interests. 
So this is Mr. Miguel Lopez de Legazpi. He is a Spanish explorer who established Spain's dominion over the Philippines that lasted until the Spanish-American War of 1898. He was born in the year of 1510 in Spain but died in the year of 1572 in Manila. Although Ferdinand Magellan had discovered the Philippines archipelago in 1521, no European settlements had been made there. So, Mr. Luis de Velasco, advisor of Spain, sent Legazpi to claim it. So, Legazpi reached in Cebu, one of the southern islands of archipelago, and not in the year of 1565, founding the first Spanish settlement in the site of modern Cebu City. Visayans were feared and respected as warriors. War and virility central to the pre-colonial Visayan culture. So, kilala ang Visayan tribe sa pagiging malakas, malakas sa pagkikipaglaban. So, they have also seafarers and raiders. They attack each other or more often than not. Other also, they um, attack go to islands near the archipelago in the area. The most common targets of the Visayan tribe are the Moros and the Maranao people. So an account from the Gatsby talk of how Raha Sulaiman of Tondo saw the Visayans as fierce warriors only to become weak under the Spanish influence. The Visayans saw warfare as an initiation right toward manhood. This was shown in their tattoos. As you can see in the picture beside the text, they have a lot of tattoos in their body. And later, we are going to explain why they have a lot of tattoos and what are the symbols, the meanings of their tattoos. So, for the men's, their tattoos showcased to boast of their valor. The motifs were seen as symbols of bravery and fierceness in battle. So as for the women, they had tattoos for their conquest and sex and also symbolizes beauty and fertility. As you can see in the picture beside the text, you can see the warrior class wear bahag and the red turban. So men who had killed an enemy additionally showcased their feet wearing this. Visayans practice unique body modification. So tattoos, Spanish call them pintados or the painted ones. It was inspired by scales of mountain ranges as you can see in the picture placed on arms and hands while sun and flowers are placed in chest and also in their face as you can see in the previous picture one of the most prevalent tradition was decorating their teeth black by chewing a nipai root or applying a tar based coating called tapul they also chewed betel nut ant eggs or castle flower to paint their teeth red the aim was to make their teeth look symmetrical and even by filing them and sometimes removing half tooth in the process the science were top class drinkers drinking was a social event that was done for anything and everything from official works to family gatherings and community decisions Pagampang or conversation and usually began with agda an exhortation to a person or the water to take the first shot. So these are the alcohol beverages of the Visayan tribe. They have tuba, alak, kabarawan, intos, in pangganse. So tuba is a rice wine strengthened and dyed red with wood barks. And alak, it is a distilled tuba or other spirits. And as for the kabarawan, it is a fermentation of wood barks and honey, which they drank commonly from a jar with through straws. Next, they have intus, a wine made from sugar cane. Next, they have pangansi, a rice wine reserved for formal occasions and ceremonies. Take note, hindi po umiinom ang Visayans kung wala naman pong occasions or gathering. 
Next, we have the traditional courtship of the Visayan tribe during the pre-colonial times. So, this picture beside the text are not the Visayan tribe, but it is just an example of how they do of what is serenading or spoken bala or spoken poetry. So, in the Visayas region, most especially in Cebu, balak or spoken poetry was the most popular courtship mode in the past. This involved a highly emotive and expressive recitation of love verses by the suitor to his adored lady. Through these feelings of love were being highlighted and were actually made as basis of the emotional way the gentleman was keeping for his ideal woman. Now, we have musics and instruments of the Visayan tribe. So, folk songs like Pelemon, Paketong Kitong, Ele Ele, Tulug Anay, Rosas, Padan, and Patonila originated from this region which is the Visayan. The long list of Visayan folk songs includes lullabies, Working songs, harana, and children's songs. So here are the examples of Visayan folk songs. And as for the children's song, they have Ilo nga bata, drinking song, kundansuy, working song, sipilimon, epic song, kandu, serenade song, matud nila, debate song, balitaw, nonsense song, pakitong kito. And also, as for the instruments, the Visayans are also known to be very skilled. They are not only good singers, but also in instruments. So here is the examples of some instruments that Visayan tribe use. So first, the, we have the lute. Next, we have the subing. Third, the tulali or the lantui.